Welcome to the Knotless Nation Nugget Series, where one small lesson can make a big difference in your braiding. Get ready, y'all, because I'm about to drop some gems. Welcome to Ready or Not. I hope you are excited to learn how to finally create a seamless knotless braid and see what these braiders are doing up close and personal. So this short tool list does not have any product. That is not an accident. I want you to practice the technique without product. It is the best way to learn. Once you have the technique down packed, then we can incorporate some products and really get you going. But remember, this nugget is specifically about technique. And once you understand, then you can move on to bigger and better things. All right, let's go. There is more than one way to add hair when creating a knotless braid. Technique A and B are both techniques that I use depending on the situation. Technique A is what I would use for somebody with shorter hair because I might need to build a backbone sooner rather than later. I am feeding in the hair on both the left and right side. And don't worry, I'm going to show you on a real client exactly what I'm doing. So if you can't see, don't worry about it. We're going to get to an actual install where I break it down step by step. This is more so for you to see there are, in fact, multiple ways to add hair to create a knotless braid. Technique B is my go-to technique. This is what I use every day, all day to create a knotless braid. Some people like to make their first feed in to the right. Some people like to do it to the left. I alternate between the two depending on the part of the head that I am on. So if you notice, technique B is different because I am only feeding in hair on the right side. If you are left-handed and the left side is more comfortable, absolutely do what works for you. There is no right or wrong answer. I wanted to just give you this quick tip before we get into the actual technique to start on clean blow dried hair. I'm using a heated brush to stretch the hair even further because my client still had some curls at her root. It is on a low setting temperature, but starting braids on clean stretched hair gives you the best results. There is a separate Knotless Nation Nugget class all about preparing for the client and what to do and how to set up your work area. I wanted to make sure to emphasize that when you are separating the pieces of hair, that the pieces are smaller than the area you are working on. This will make sense when we get on the live client or even on the mannequin. Okay, now let's see what this looks like on a real person. As you can see, my fingers are in position to receive the synthetic hair. I have the hair prepped and ready in small loops, but all I am doing is feeding the loop to my thumb and index. I am not going past my first knuckle. As you can see, I am just looping my index finger and basically it's like a lasso. If you think about it as a lassoing a horse, you are looping the hair around your index like taking a lasso and putting it around a horse. I hope that was not too complicated to understand. And what you're going to do is basically do this three times. Index finger and thumb is ready to receive the hair. Add it to the hair. Continue to braid. As you notice, I'm using technique B and I am only feeding one side of the braid. This is the third loop that I'm going to add and very easily, I put the hair between my index and thumb and continue to braid. Now, that point right there is very crucial because I went from braiding with my palm down to my palm up. And that is how I continue and finish the braid. And there you have it. That is how you create a seamless knotless braid. Here is another angle. I know it's off to the side, but I think it gives a great view of what's happening. Notice that I'm using a little bit of product on the client's natural hair. Using product to act somewhat like 
an adhesive or, you know, like it's supposed to be a little sticky and tacky so that it can act like a glue. This is just an analogy. Using something that will help you during the install is what allows the hair to tuck nicely, to lay nicely, and to do what you need it to do to get to the end result. Now, this is not a class about tucking or product usage. This is just about technique, but I wanted to point that out because if you are using this to do a full install, I want you to understand why in this video I'm doing what I'm doing. Tapping the product onto the hair keeps the hair together, but also allows the synthetic hair to bond and connect to the client's natural hair so that it creates a very neat braid. Just a reminder that the technique that I used on the client was technique B. I split the hair into three pieces and I am only feeding my hand synthetic hair from one side only. Hopefully this all makes sense and you understand the steps to create a knotless braid. Keep practicing and email me at theknotlessnation at gmail.com with pictures of your progress. I would love to celebrate your wins. Thank you for watching this Knotless Nation Nugget. And if you want to learn any other specific skills in a short amount of time, please check out the other Knotless Nation Nugget classes that I have available. And best of luck on your braiding journey.